What's the word, y'all? We back. Um, I thought last episode was going to be end of the series, but they put it all together, man. The top 100 players in the NBA this season. Interesting stuff here. Uh, I mean, y'all spammed me with it. Y'all know I was going to be looking, right? Y'all know I check Bleach Report every single day, so you ain't got to spam me with the BR articles. I'm there already, all right? But thank you for that. Um, one thing I will say is that at the end of the day, rankings are subjective, you know what I'm saying? I may disagree with all 100 rankings here, but it, it just doesn't matter. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go crazy because some player is two spots above somebody else. It's all subjective. I mean, yeah, you you make your opinions based on the eye test and the statistics and everything. These are just these two guys. This doesn't represent the entire company of Bleacher Report or anything. So we'll see. I'm just gonna, I'm, I just want to go through the list. I just want to go through the list. I'm not gonna spend time on all 100 players. But here we go. Uh, so, yeah, we already went through point guard, shooting guard, small four, power four, centers. Y'all saw those. And if you didn't, go watch those. Let's get it. Injury ex ex exclusions. Uh, Marvin Bagley, Boogie, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Blake Griffin, Luke Kennard, Victor Depot, Clay, and John Wall. Makes sense. Just missed the cut. All right, let's see how many of these players do I think are top 100 that just missed the cut. Harrison Barnes. Shout out to Mikael Bridges, the homie. Brandon Clark, two very young players right here. Gordon Drogic, Norman Finney Smith, Joe Harris, George Hill, Rashawn Holmes, Royce O'Neal, Norman Powell not being top 100 is surprising to me, especially considering the season he had. Um, again, and oh, if you did not know, this is strictly based off this year. We don't care, or they don't care, what you did the first 15 years of your career, but strictly based on 2019, 2020. So keep that in mind. And if we're talking just 2019, 2020, Norman Powell deserves some love other than just being outside looking in. Honestly, Norman Powell was amazing this season. He should be a, a most improved player candidate, but Bam and, uh, and and Brandon Ingram just throwing, you know, taking that away. But Norman Powell not being top 100 is kind of crazy to me. Not crazy, but it's a bit surprising to me. Maybe that's the word. Julius Randle, J.J. Reddick, Josh Richardson, Colin Sexton, and Tristan Thompson. All right, let's get to 100 through 96. At 100, we have Dante DiVincenzo just in the second year. Um, I think his, his trajectory of his career is pretty solid. I think we already talked about Dante DiVincenzo on the shooting guard list, but maybe we didn't. Um, I like Dante DiVincenzo. Him being top 100 doesn't make me upset or anything. TJ Warren at 99, that may be a bit lower than where I would have him. But again, he made the list. I'll take that. Derek White. Similar to what I said when I was talking about DeMar, when I was talking about LaMarcus, I didn't really watch a ton of Spurs games this season. Um, I, I, But based on what I did see, this is surprising to see him in the top 100. Um, again, I watch way more Raptors games than Spurs games, so maybe that's what's coming to mind. But I could see Norman Powell being better than Derek White. But I, this is one, I won't, I'm, obviously, I'm not reading all 100 excerpts right now. Lineup politics of Cap Derek White's crack at appreciable progress. progress. Uh, why is that more than 20% of his looks come off catch and fire threes on the, uh, the defense? Is slightly less inclined to go. Duncan Robinson, shout out to, okay, I, I'm going to keep saying that Duncan Robinson in my eyes is like a rookie. I know he played minutes a year ago and maybe even a year before that, but this is the first time we've actually seen him play play, and the fact that he's at 97 is pretty cool. OG Ananobi may be a bit lower than I would probably have him, uh, but I, I, y'all know I love two-way players. I love players that can do something exceptionally well on the defensive side of the ball and also knock down shots, and that is what OG Ananobi has been this season. Next, we have Karis LeVert at 95. Karis LeVert is a very wishy-washy player where, like, some games he looks amazing and some games you're like, it's Karis LeVert on the floor. So, at 95, I don't feel terrible about that. Davis Bertans at Laffy and Laser. Danny Green. Marcus Morris Sr. I'm very curious about that um, because when he was with the Knicks, he was amazing. You know what I'm saying? And that could be just a product of having more shots because the Knicks sucked. But not even just that he was getting high-volume shots. He was shooting close to like 50% on threes for majority of this season. Um, so it's surprising that he's. this is probably lower than what I would expect him to be. But again, I'm not going to complain about it. 90 is Mitchell, 91 is Mitchell Robinson. Then we get to the 90s, which is Marc Gasol. If it wasn't for Marc Gasol's injury this season, I would guess that he'd be higher. He's one of those players that on counting numbers, not going to tell the full story of the impact of a guy like Marc Gasol. But again, him being older, him being injured, I'm guessing that Serge Ibaka is significantly higher on this list because Serge played the Marc Gasol role while Marc Gasol was out. Then we have Clint Capella at 89. 
Uh, Clint Capella was such a weird season for him because when he's with the Rockets, he was looking cool. But eventually he went out and they figured out, oh, snap, we were probably a better team without him. I wish we would have got to see him play for the Hawks this season. But even after the trade, he wasn't healthy enough to play. Drummond at 88. So people were asking me on the last episode um, when we were talking about centers, where is Drummond? Because uh, Drummond did not make the top 15. In my mind, it didn't, it didn't even cross my mind that he wasn't really there. And maybe that's because I, uh, the Detroit Pistons are kind of over here, and then he got traded to another team, and the Cavs is kind of over here that we don't pay a lot of attention to. Um, one thing that we know he's extorted for, and that is his rebounding. Then we have Hassan Whiteside. Um, Hassan Whiteside's had um, a good season for his standards. Um, it just seems like when it's a contract year, Hassan Whiteside finds a way to have a good year. So 87 is pretty cool, especially considering probably the year before that a lot of people had died out on the Hassan Whiteside love because he was just kind of, he was so stat oriented more than win. And I don't know, it just felt like that when we were watching that he was so block happy. I needed my three blocks. I needed my three blocks, no matter what. I was going to try to get my three blocks. And that overshadowed like him leaving assignments and this and that. Number 86, Lou Will. Shout out to Lou Will. Then we have Jared Allen. Jared Allen at 85, which is cool. Um, DeAndre Jordan, probably not on the list. And Jared Allen is. Shout out to him. Then we have Rocco. Robert Covington at 84 again. I know it's memes on my main channel about my opinion of Robert Covington and stuff, but I promise I promise it's all memes. I really like Robert Covington's game. Um, I love that he defends well and the fact that he's able to hit that shot. Then we have Kelly Oubre at 83. Miles Turner at 82. Al Horford at 81, and this is a big fall from Al, uh, from Al Horford considering like the past previous years. He had always been like a top 50 player in the NBA, uh, but this year's just been very weird because he hasn't really found a spot in Philly, and then he started to find a spot when um, they moved him to the bench. He was playing uh, he was playing some bench time minutes, and Philly was looking better there, and then Joel Embiid got injured, and then Al Horford had to slide back into the starting lineup and everything. The 76ers have been a minus 2.4 points per 100 possessions when Horford is at the 4, and a plus 5.8 points per 100 possessions was at the 5. That's basically what I'm saying. Um, when he was off the bench, when he was playing without Joel Embiid, and he was the 5 when he was coming off the bench, the team was significantly better. Then we get to 80, which is Tim Hardaway Jr. Tim Hardaway Jr. is having a really good year, man. He's having a really, really good year for his standings. And then Evan Fournier, he's one of the most fun people to, to follow on Instagram right now. If you did not know, he put up two vlogs of the NBA life in the bubble. And we ain't really seeing that. So shout out to Evan Fournier keeping us informed. I would recommend following him alongside following me at Kenny, H-O-H underscore. Then we have Draymond Green at 78. Um... This is a very curious case because, again, we are strictly basing this off this 2019-2020 season. Not what Draymond Green has done in the past and not what we know what he's capable of. But I can say this season, Draymond Green was basically not good. I, I, I could say that with confidence. This season, Draymond Green was not good good but i have no doubt in my mind the next season once he has his boys playing with him again he will be good so this is a bit confusing to me that we're breaking this season and draymond green is this high let me read it the 2019 2020 season has undoubtedly been a downturn for draymond green his points per game average yada 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 um still present a picture of a versatile point forward but his officially has been a, his efficiency have been abysmal and that's what i'm trying to say i just don't realize ranking him higher than some of the other guys uh, okay. But again, Draymond Green is the type of player that needs good players around him. Um, and he's playing with not so good players this season. Joe Ingles, shout out to him, man. Joe Ingles. I love watching Joe Ingles shoot the basketball because he holds it basically right. It's just, it's a very weird thing. I like Joe Ingles. Jaron Jackson Jr. Oh my God. Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, good spot for the sophomore year player. I'll, I'll take this any time of the day. Again, he's a big reason why the Memphis Grizzlies are winning, get, win, get, winning games. Then we have Jonathan Isaac, which is weird to me. Because how many games this season did Jonathan Isaac actually play? You know what I'm saying? I feel like he missed a, a great majority of the season. Jonathan Isaac would have been a much higher placement if not with a knee injury that might end his season. Um, yeah, so it's I know, I know what he can do. I know what he can do. But I feel like the sample size for this season alone was a bit smaller than, obviously, everybody else. P.J. Tucker, man of many hats. He can do pretty much anything on the court. Um role player wise i'm not asking pj tucker to isolation and step back on somebody that's what his teammates are for but he does he does the dirty work um <laughs> does all the dirty work then we have aaron gordon we talked about aaron gordon a few episodes ago christian war shout out to him i just saw a tweet from him where he was saying um 
my main goal is to be one of the best bigs in the league. And I like that. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Patrick Beverly at 71. Then we get to DeJounte Murray. I thought that was going to be Jamal Murray. I was going to say that is surprisingly low for Dejon Murray. I mean, for Jamal Murray, but for DeJounte Murray, it makes sense. It makes sense. This is basically his first time back. And then even with that, he was on a minutes restriction for it seemed like a lot of the season. So I understand that he's still an elite defender, all defensive dis uh, defender. But uh, just this season was a, a bit down year because he was coming back from his injuries. Then we have Buddy Hill at 69. Uh, first half of the season, he wasn't hitting the shots. You know what I'm saying? First half of the season, he was not hitting the shots. And then he went up to the bench unit. He's like, okay, I am i don't think he liked it, but it was better for his efficiency. It was better for the team because they started winning more games once Buddy Hills moved to the bench. Dennis Schroeder, my sixth man of the year right here. Um, and that's all I can really say about Dennis. Valentin Chunas, Devontae Graham, shout out to him for jumping onto the scene like this. D. Rose at 65. I'm not going to complain about D. Rose at 65. I'm happy that he's even this high on the list. Um, great year for Derrick Rose for his standing, especially when you consider the past previous years. Um, I love to watch Derrick Rose play. I love to watch him play. Bogdanovich, Tobias Harris, okay. Will Barton, shout out to Will. Ricky Rubio, one of the best playmakers in the game right now. Then we get to... See, I, I want to spend more energy on the, the top half because, again, if I think that... Derrick Rose deserves to be three spots higher. That's really nothing because he's still, you know what I'm saying, still ranking in a similar spot. Derrick Favors, Montrez Harrell, Brooke Lopez, Steven Adams, and Lonzo Ball. All right, I could, I could dig that. I could dig that. Then we get to basically get into the top 50. Serge Ibaka, like I mentioned, he will be a lot higher, and he was at 55. Marcus Smart at 54. DeMar at 53. That, seemed, that seems low for a guy like DeMar DeRozan, but DeMar DeRozan, again, is a raw stats guy, and I don't know if the advanced metrics love him as much as, like, the authors of this article love the advanced stats. As you can see, three points. They always put these advanced stats, uh, percentile, yada, yada, yada. Paul Millsap, Kevin Love. Now we have the top 50 with LaMarcus Aldridge. Okay, shout out to LMA. DeAndre Aiden, we talked about him last episode. Malcolm Brogdon, I love to see that. I mean, he's fallen off from the 50, 40, 90 from the previous year, but he's still an impactful player. When Malcolm Brogdon wants to get to the rim, it's not many people that's going to stop him from doing this. Shout out to Malcolm Brogdon. Jamal Murray. So this is a way more acceptable spot than what I saw with DeJounte. Uh, but let's see who's right above him. Spencer Dinwiddie. Won't complain. Won't complain. Then we have D'Angelo Russell at 45. A very curious year from him because uh, first half of the season, he's playing with players. They weren't very good, you know what I'm saying? 44 is Zach Levine. Uh, throwing the bias out the door, I think this might be a little bit low for him, but I can understand why somebody would have him this low because he is like a one-dimensional player. It's like he's all offense, no defense. And again, the overall perspective of Zach Levine is that he puts up empty statistics, and I hope that one day he can change that narrative about him. I hope he does. hope he does. And basically what I'm saying is I hope that the Bulls become good one day. That's all I'm basically saying. Gordon Hayward... <laughs> Gordon Hayward over Zach Levine, do I feel that? I don't agree. I don't agree. But I'm sure there's some Celtics fans out there that will, so I'm, I'm not making an argument. Fred Van Vliet, shout out to him. He's about to make a big-time bag this offseason, depending on. I don't know where it's going to be. I don't know where it's going to be. Maybe it's New York. Maybe it's Detroit. I feel like it's going to be one of those teams that just need another guard. And shout out to him. He's going to make that cash. John Collins at 41. That's a good spot for the year three play, right? It's his third year in, the, in this NBA career. Eric Bledsoe, okay. Chris Dasperzingis at 39. Again, it's based off this season, not just the, the half of the season where he was great, but the first half of the season should matter too, where he wasn't bad. He just wasn't all-star Porzingis, and then we got to the point where he was starting to look like all-star Porzingis, so that makes sense. Gallinari, winning player. Vucevic. De'Aaron Fox, shout out to Swiper. Where was Swiper ranked amongst point guards? I don't remember, but I love watching Swiper play. Uh, Demontis Sabonis at 35. That that seems a bit low for an all-star guy. Who's who's right above him? John Morant and CJ McCollum and then Donovan Mitchell. What do I? Uh, I don't know. I don't. Do I feel like this is slow? Yes. But how many people that I just named would I put him over? You know what I'm saying? That's that's the way you got to think about it. Yes, the number, the raw number of Demont Sabonis being the 35th best player in the NBA seems low. But then you compare him to, like, John Morant. I could see Sabonis being better than him this season. But then again, John Morant, the, the team was supposed to be 25 wins. They are in the bubble right now with the 8th seed. A lot of that is John Morant, man. A lot of that is John Morant. 
and then compare it to like CJ McCollum. CJ's going to be a bucket regardless. And the lack of all-star appearances is not an argument for me, considering the competition. The competition for Sabonis to make the All-Star game this year was significantly less than the competition for CJ. I'm not making a case that CJ should have been an All-Star, but you get what I'm saying? Like, the talent pool on the Western Conference side for guards are, is elite, and then the talent pool for forwards amongst the Eastern Conference is not that elite. You get what I'm saying? Uh, 32 is going to be Donovan Mitchell. Um, I was talking to some people, and a, a lot of people believe that Donovan Mitchell is overrated. So seeing him at 32 is not a surprise here. We know that he is a, a, a good scorer and everything, um, but a lot of people believe that he is overrated. So 32, uh, 32 feels a bit low, but I'm not going to complain. Shay. I love me some Shay. 30, Jalen Brown. Then we have Zion at 29. I'm gonna make I already made the argument about Zion being high. I can I understand the, the idea of it, but I just I wish it was more than just the 565 minutes of total play to base my opinion on Zion right now. Um I think his future is amazing. And, and then I just saw that he's even more ripped now than he was here. It's a dangerous sight. Then we have Brandon Ingram at 28. Devin Booker at 27. Bam at 26. Bam versus Devin Booker. I know it's, it's hard to compare two players that run different positions. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even want to try to make the argument that Devin Booker should be higher considering, again, they're running different positions. I just think the workload on the offensive side of the ball for D-Book is so elite. But then the workload for Bam Adebayo on the defensive side of the ball is elite. And then he also holds offense. Uh, I can see either way, I would probably put D-Book above Bam at this point in their careers. Drew Holiday being 25 is really surprising to me, though. That's over Bam. That's over D-Book. That's over Brandon Ingram. That's over Jalen Brown. Say, De again, Drew Holiday is my boy. But seeing him at 25 is high. Can we agree on that? It's high. Yeah. I think it's high. I think it's high. And these SR, these little write-ups are the same as the other ones because I remember reading this line. Drew Holiday is the same as ever. Damn good and underappreciated. It's the same thing. Kemba at 24. 23, Trey, Ice Trey. Let's get it. I like that spot for him considering offensively he's a juggernaut. Defensively, he is a nothing. Russell Westbrook at 22. Russell Westbrook at 22 is wrong. I want to read what they say. Slotting Russell Westbrook any higher would demand selective memory. Indeed, he turned a corner once a Houston Rockets steered into micro ball. He averaged 31 and I round up to 6 with a 57 true shooter percentage since Clint Capella left the rotation. Close to 56% of his field goals were coming five feet, coming inside five feet this uh, during this time compared to, yeah, 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 yeah. It would not be a stretch to say this is the best version of Russell Westbrook ever. Okay, so tell me why you have him 22nd. The OKC Thunder never afforded him so much room to maneuver. That is a fact. Not even in the Kevin Durant years. His downhill attacks are a different kind of terrifying and almost impossible to stop. When he's not forced to navigate cramped spaces, he's even upped his accuracy from downtown from 30... Okay. So tell me, still the first part of the season happened. Russell Westbrook was on course for the fourth worst true shooting percentage of his career prior to January 1st. While firing up too many threes during which, okay. So there, okay, I don't need to read anymore. So their argument is that the first two months, two and a half months of the season, Russell Westbrook was not good. And then, yeah, once Clint Capella was out, Elite. A 22 is still too low for me, though. You know what I'm saying? 22 is still too low for me. Opponents outscore. Okay, what are they saying? Yada, 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 yada. Russell Westbrook deserves credit for flipping the script. And that's that's the main thing for me. That's the main thing for me. Usually, if a player is going to progress or change his play style, it happens in the offseason where they have time to practice in this. Russell Westbrook was like, okay, today I want to shoot seven threes, and then after that, I won't shoot another one for the rest of the year. It switched like that. And that's winner mentality. That's just understanding. Of, I mean, it took him a while to understand that, hey, I shouldn't be shooting threes. But the fact that he did get to that point where he understood it should be something we praise him for. 
Bradley Beal at 21. Cal Lowry at 20. I'm still having Russell Westbrook over Cal Lowry personally. I, I, again, I understand the idea of having Cal Lowry above, but I'm going to put Russell Westbrook above Cal Lowry. Kyrie Irving at 19. Rudy Gobert at 18. 17, Pascal. 16, Paul George. 15. See, the idea of Paul George is interesting because in the NBA, the NBA just released an article, the top 10 players in the bubble right now, and Paul George is like number nine on their list, and they have him number 16 in the entire league this season. So, like, the idea of Paul George has been so different between everybody. So, CMS 16, you know what I'm saying? Uh, ben Simmons, Carl Anthony Towns, Chris Paul. Shout out to Chris Paul. Again, if we're strictly based it off this season, I completely agree with Chris Paul being this high. Uh, Joel Embiid at 12. Jason Tatum at 11. Chris Middleton at 10. This is probably going to be super high for a lot of you guys, but I, I can understand it. He's basically 50, 40, 90 this season. Um, well, actually, 10. I would say 10 is kind of high. I would say that. Yes, 10 is kind of high. Um, but he should be in the 15 to 10 realm, if you ask me. 50, 40, 90. Still a good defender. Um, stuff like that. He's closed out a few games for them when they need a jump shooting. I'm not going to complain about him being 10. Is it maybe slightly higher than what I would put him? Yes, but it's still in the same ballpark than the fact that I'm not going to be upset. You know what I'm saying? Like the Russell Westbrook one, I think that's extremely low. Or the Drew Holiday one, I think that may be extremely high. Chris Middleton, still the same ballpark for this season alone. Nine, Jimmy Butler. Eight, Anthony Davis. Wow. Okay, I expect him to be way higher than eight. Dame, I can say Dame. Yep, Dame should be... Maybe a little higher. If we strictly based off this season, the individual, they might be a little bit higher. Jokic, okay. There's Luka at five. Four is James Harden. Three is Kawhi. Two is LeBron. And one is Giannis. One is Giannis, I agree with. LeBron at two, I agree with. Kawhi at three, I agree with. James Harden at four, I agree. I, I can agree with their top five. After that, I can see people getting switched around. But I think the top five is pretty solid. I think top five is pretty solid. Okay. I spent way too much time on this article. Um, the biggest things for me, Russell Westbrook too low. Drew Holiday maybe too high. Everything else, eh.